year of the 21st century, a man standing by a highway in the middle of America pulled from his pocket his life savings, $30, laid it inside a phone booth and walked away. You know, I've known Daniel for 20 years before he gave up money. And then when he did give, give up about 10 years ago, I heard about it and I just figured he was crazy. He said the money was an illusion and I didn't really believe that. In 2008 though, after the economy collapsed and money just disappeared that we thought we had, I started to give him a second look and I wondered, well maybe he had a point because if your house was worth 500,000 one day and then only 300,000 the next day, what happened to that 200,000? What was that money in the first place? Not a YouTuber, just like making videos. And let's get one thing clear here. One thing that I have proven. And one thing that people can't argue with me at this point, especially with this sector of YouTube, that I am the master debater. Not only can people not uh, take apart my arguments, but a lot of people, when they uh, come to me, or they want to rebuke what I say, they end up destroying themselves. Almost to the point where I don't even have to make a rebuttal video, you know what I'm saying? It became senseless and pointless. Um, as far as that, let me go into that clip. The clip I showed you at the beginning there, was a guy who um, supposedly expunged himself from society, a guy who was fed up with the monetary system and that, you know, he wanted to live like a, a hermit or some sort of woodland gnome, a uh, nomad and so forth. This was, a, a, you know, I guess this guy got tired of money. Now, I mentioned this guy before in a previous video. And, but still, seeing this guy, now, my personal feelings about this guy, I think this guy's kind of crazy. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't make this type of sacrifice. But I think this guy is an interesting character to the point where he wants to completely um, reject the concept of money. Now, would I say that this guy is, is, is an ignoramus or would I say that this guy has virtually no credibility because he doesn't have anything to his name. No, I'm pretty sure that this probably is a very smart fellow. And I'm pretty sure that this guy, if he can probably wake some people up, so say, or, or reach to some people and have people follow him. But if this guy was to ever come to my city and do a lecture, I would definitely show up. So hence, just because this guy rejects, this, this guy I showed you in the clip, just because he has nothing, would you, would you think that he has no beneficial knowledge? Now, I'm going to go into John's uh, ridiculous video about me. And, um, you know, I, I really want to come at an angle on it, do, put time stamps on it, and break it down on a technical level, but I said no. I'm like, this video has only proven me right. I'm like, then John Daniel cut his own head off and gave it to me on a platter. <laughs> you know, I'm like, and it's like in my, my video that he responded to that I had some sort of premonition or some sort of foresight. That a lot of the accusations or the questions John posed that I sort of kind of, um, I answered it, you know what I'm saying, in advance. Hence, I made a video um, and he wanted to guess clear his name or try to um, get at me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, make a rebuttal to what I was saying, but he sunk himself deeper in a quicksand. You see what I mean? Hence, he made some asinine comment. He already put himself in a quicksand, and then he came out with this video where he sunk himself even further. It would have been better off that he not came out with that video and so forth, because he destroyed his own credibility. You know, he had to abandon logic and reason to, uh, you know, what I'm saying to get at me. So hence, further proving that I'm the master debater and I am the epitome of logic and reason. In this corner. Now, okay, first of all, he first off, he, he starts off talking about office space or whatever. He tries to use some sort of clever thing there. And he says, you know, uh, asking me, you know what I'm saying, what I do for a living. 
Now, I, I mentioned like in three videos, I've mentioned where exactly what I do, you know what I'm saying, to generate income and so forth. I mentioned it in three videos so far. If he never watched the videos, then you know what I'm saying, that's his bad. He should have done some research. Also, I have a passion as an artist. You know, and it's funny how people leave that, uh, you know I'm saying, when people are trying to, uh, lack for a better term, uh, come at me, you know, try to dissect me, that they leave that out. <laughs> they leave out the part that I'm a passionate artist. And then he said something that I have to get off my ass and get something. First of all, he has to prove that I don't have anything or that I'm not a hard worker. Actually, at my job, which I'm a subcontractor, um, I work about 60 to 70 hours a week. Um, I work six days a week. You know, uh, uh, maybe take one vacation. I know I work my ass off. <laughs> I'm saying at my job. Sometimes when I call into the uh, the Wood Grain Radio Show, I'm I'm actually at work. I'm I'm driving around. I'm at work. So you know that's completely. But still, this whole theory about um, you know what I'm saying, working, that, you know what I'm saying, and I'm not, in, in no, in, in, a man should work, but just because somebody works from can't see in the morning to can't see at night, don't mean they have anything, hence there's a lot of people who own their own business, and their business fall under, and they actually end up in debt, and they show up to the, they open, you know what I'm saying, and they're open seven days a week, 14 hours a day, you know, and sometimes it deals with the economy or whatever, so, hence, even if I don't have anything, it still won't prove that I'm not a hard worker. Hence, you know, look at the whole farming industry and what those, uh, a chicken farmer, what they got to do just to even make a little bit. And some of these guys, they work all day and they freaking just break even. Now, and his, <laughs> now his charge against me, I'm like, the thing is, when he was supposedly, um, it's like he created a new Pinhead Blackson. The Pinhead Blackson that he was debating or whatever doesn't exist. Maybe there's another Pinhead Blackson running around here on the internet. I don't know. But people have used this tar this tactic against me before. They created an another Pinhead Blackson. You know, and then debated him. The uh, Pinhead Blackson that I myself wouldn't agree with. Now, he said that my videos will not reach the youth. He said my videos is, I want black people to do better. Well, my personal opinion, I do want black people to do better. I also want white people to do better. <laughs> you know, well, but no, I don't, my videos ain't about shaming tactics. Anybody knows, I'm not gonna tell black people to start their own business when I don't have my own business. Hence, in my video that he responded to, I literally stated what my uh, what my channel was about I do make I talk about books I do rebuttal videos or whatever um, the things you know what I'm saying I uh, go after white racist and so forth but I'm also a macrocosmic thinker I, I know that a lot of blacks are gonna go wayside and on top of that um, like Charles Barkley I'm not a role model I'm like a, it, it starts at everything starts at home you know, a teacher or whatever, nobody will get to these kids, you know what I'm saying, if they don't have a, a, a strong family structure. But my channel, you know what I'm saying, isn't about that. It isn't about, you know what I'm saying, raising kids and so forth. I'm like, what impact will I'm going to have when I have like a, a, I only got like 400, 500 subscribers, you know what I'm saying. I, I barely reached 300 views. <laughs> um, and then he compared to me to Tyreek Na Nasheed. I'm like, uh, that's flattering, but no. Tyreek Nasheed specialized in this, you know what I'm saying, what he did, that's his specialty, that's how he makes money, how he gets paid. I don't get paid for my YouTube videos, my YouTube videos are, um, they're a hobby, you know what I'm saying, it's therapeutic, you know what I'm saying, it's the way I release stress, it's what I enjoy doing, and whatever. Now, still, going into this whole thing about, you have to be at a certain status in life in order to reach people, that's ridiculous. Here I'm going to debunk this, take, um, Momia, we all know who he is. Um, you know, he, you know, he definitely wanted to wake it, black people up and did, you know, what I'm saying, and fought for the cause. 
But you know, he was a he was a taxi driver. You know what I'm saying? That was his trade. Not knocking it, taxi drivers make good money, you know, depending on what city that they're in. But you know what I'm saying? Imagine we always had these Genchis, these these house Negroes. And some of these dudes are well educated. Some of these guys are very established. You know what I'm saying? They got uh, they got money, they walk around fancy suits, fancy cars, and they're telling black people, they're like, hey, 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 don't rebel against Whitey, look at me. All, even with all this racism you claim that exists, I've, I've became successful in life. We've all, even, you know what I'm saying, even when black people were just freed from slavery, we had these buck dancers. These, uh, these you know what I'm saying, some of them were um, well-to-do black men telling black people to calm down, be quiet, don't riot or whatever. Don't get mad at the white man. So hence, what is a young black youth to do? You know what I'm saying, listen to this, this buck dancer that's telling to ignore uh, racial injustice or follow Momia who's telling you to fight the power even though Momia is just a cab driver and this guy who's telling us to calm down maybe some sort of lawyer or business owner or somebody who has money you see what I mean so there's plenty of guys who are not who don't have nothing that are still out there waking people up hence but my video is not like that I don't I don't invest that much time in my channel to wake people up. I assume people who watch my videos are already enlightened souls or whatever. You know, I talk about books and so forth. I'm like, my auntie, who is one of the uh, most successful people in our, in our family. And if I showed you my auntie's house, it will just blow you away. And she watches my videos. She knows what's going on. <laughs> you know, she watches Kevin Smith and Monty and all this other stuff. She don't. She don't comment on them. <laughs> Matter of fact, when Monty came out with his video against me, she called me up and said, "Hey, you know, your your friend made a video, but still, she but she'll tell me on Facebook. She's like, wow, I learned a lot from your last video. So hence, here's an example. Even though yeah, she's my relative. She's an example of somebody." who is way more stabbed, way more successful than I am, very successful in life, who learned something. My video is about people have commented on my videos and said that they've learned something. Matter of fact, even John Logic himself has stated that there's no way you can't learn something from my videos and so forth. Hence, I've never claimed to be uh, some sort of uh, financial guru. I've never said that, hey, if you watch my videos, they're the key to success. No. Now, another thing when, when John Logic uh, uh, said in that video, he said something about, um, um, <laughs> what did he say? He, he said something about, you know, uh, he barely, he don't even really watch these videos in his part of YouTube that he just shows up and he says what's going on and, no, he watches these videos, he watches them closely and also, for him to insert, because this is about, he's getting mad at me for a comment he made that was in an insult to me. And that if he watched the videos, if he's a logical person, he should know why I'm coming at L.A. and how L.A. retaliated against me. It's simple. It's about L.A. lied on me and stated that I talked bad about his kids. And that's what made me react. So John Logic, being a logical person, should have sit back and be like, okay, or he didn't know if he wasn't taking sides, he should have looked at both of our arguments. He should have looked at LA's argument and my argument. But hence, you know what I'm saying, for him to say he's not taking somebody's side, I'm like, man, that's complete fucking bullshit. You know, and um, why why is he on LA's side is beyond me when um, LA has made derogatory remarks against homosexuals um, <laughs> and LA made derogatory remarks about interracial couples but he won't call LA on that because I guess that's his that's his friend or whatever and John Logic could come back and say well uh, you know what I'm saying YouTube ain't my life and I'm like John Logic has more channels than I do <laughs> you know I only have two channels one I don't even upload video that channel is dead and so forth. So YouTube is a, an integral part of his life. And as far as his religious snitch channel, I'm like he uploads more videos to his this the this channel that his it, that's his guilty pleasure than his religious snitch channel. Now as far as his religious snitch page, I'm like that's dead to me. Yeah, no, because he he contradicts himself way too many times. I'm like he's on this fucking humanitarian bullshit. This humanist. But hence, 
I'm like, how can you be a, a humanist or whatever and then take jabs at somebody because of their status in life? Is that what a humanist does? No. And also going to his thing about uh, reaching the youth. I'm like, and he talks about, you know, some of these drug dealers that perform big stacks. First of all, as I said, I'm not going to try to compete with the drug dealers and so forth. It's hard to. And then he's talking about, you know, doctors, lawyers. I'm like, man, that's completely irrelevant. That bears no relevance. I'm like, there's plenty of people trying to, educators, lawyers, established people trying to talk to these youth, but they're telling these youth, hey, you have to work hard. Drug dealers got a different route. Drug dealers will tell you that, hey, tell the kids, hey, they can get this paper as soon as tonight, that night. Drug dealers will give these kids perks. They'll be like, you want the new LeBron James? They'll buy them stuff. They'll go out there and buy them the new PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One or what these kids want or iPhones to get these kids, to lure these kids into their realm and then say, hey, you can buy that stuff on your own. I can tell you how to get money and so forth. And these drug dealers and ballers or whatever is people they see every day. Every day they go into the bus stop to the school they're seeing their cars. And to some of these other people, they don't even live in the neighborhood and they'll show up to some youth center and talk to them and so forth. But hence, <laughs> the drug dealers and ballers, they got an advantage because boom, they can give people, they can literally show kids money and, and give them stuff. Buy him stuff, and let's say some uh, established member of society, he's not going to go that route. Even if he has the money to buy these kids an Air Jordan to get them to listen to him, he's not going to do it because he feels that's foolish. Because this kid will always want something. You see what I mean? And it starts at home. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately, you know what I'm saying? These kids got to have good parents, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's not my job to raise these kids. Also, let's take the. Um, Scared Straight program, you know, or let's say, or Tukey Williams. Now, Tukey Williams is a guy locked up in jail. I'm sure he reached to a lot of kids. And another, in a very effective way to get to these children, these young kids in the ghetto, is for somebody who's lived that life and who has fallen, who has nothing, who lost everything, who suffered the consequences for their action, for them to tell these kids. A dude in the Scared Straight program on what Tukey Williams did. Hey, like, look at me. Don't end up like me. You know what I'm saying? Don't end up behind bars. End up locked up in jail. Because there's no joke with these inmates here. They'll rape you. They'll make you toss their salad. You know, you got to live by a structure. Stay in school and get your education. Now, take a kid. A kid is uh, a young ghetto youth. He's looking at a, a baller who has stacks. You know, and uh, you know, got rims, tell him, hey, do this. And then he's looking at an inmate who got nothing, literally don't even have his freedom. And this inmate is trying to talk to this kid and say, hey, man, don't end up like me. You know what I'm saying? Who's more effective? Now, at, at that point, it's up to a kid to make a choice. You know, obviously the baller dude got money, like John Logic says. So going by John Logic's logic, there's no possible way somebody who actually lived that life and, and suffered the repercussions of his actions can get to this kid because a baller dude is pointing money at him and the inmate there do, don't have a dime to his name, doesn't even have his own damn freedom and who's looked at as a gallery number. You see what I'm saying? As this video was one of the most easiest to side dissect. And people maybe could say it to me like, oh, you know what I'm saying, Pinhead, get back to your real videos, real talk videos. Hey, this is a real talk video. One of my repertoires, you know, <laughs> on my channel is to make rebuttal videos. And this is what I'm doing. I'm not making any ad hominem attacks. I'm not going to attack John like he attacked me. Like, for instance, John said that, you know, I wasn't, that I'm all fucked up in life. And I wonder, what is John's definition of all fucked up? Now, in fact, a lot of what John said in this video can be applied to L.A. You know, you're not talking about me, you're talking about L.A. I'm surprised L.A. didn't care. I'm surprised L.A. didn't say, hey, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> but, um, yeah, first of all, let's, let's look at me. I've never been in trouble, never been locked up. Have I been in handcuffs before? Yes. Never been locked up. No criminal record, no warrants. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm like less than $2,000 in debt. I work. I got st a stable income. I got a roof over my head. 
um, I'm well cultured and I think that I'm a a, a, a decent guy and I and I and I and I uh, carry my own weight you see what I mean I'm not somebody that's gonna drop off put my responsibilities on somebody on somebody else you know whatever I do whatever did I rack up or if I was to get some female knocked up I'm gonna hold you see what I mean you know what I'm saying I, I carry my own weight there's a lot of people that don't do that there's a lot of people that's really fucked up, got all kind of warrants for their arrest, do bad things to people, make other people's lives miserable, live off the government, sham the government, and so forth, don't pay off their debt, don't even try to pay off their debt, you know, have kids, don't take care of their responsibilities and so forth. So there's people really fucked up. And there's even established people.